Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out a model from Skyzone. This is the Sky S140 and it's a 3 inch class model and regular subscribers to the channel will know that I'm a big fan of the 3 inch class because usually with a battery you can get it under 250 grams. However, there might be a 4 inch class model that can get under 250 grams so stay tuned for that. But yes, Skyzone is the goggle manufacturer, and while on the subject of Skyzone goggles, Skyzone have announced that they are recalling the Sky03 FPV goggles, and thanks to NJ Tech for getting this information. So, yeah, when I reviewed the Skyzone goggles, they weren't quite right. The fitment wasn't great, so they are changing the shape to fit the face better. And they are changing the DVR module, I believe, as well, because it was dropping frames and it just wasn't ready for the customer, I don't think. So, yeah, I'll overlay an email address here. And if you bought into the Sky Zero 3s, then you can email them and they are going to recall them and change them. So that's a good thing. But yes, it seems like they have ventured into the plug and fly RTF copter. So let's take a look at it. So this is the box that it comes in, but it actually has a, another case here, Skyzone hard case. So let's take a look at it here. So we've got a very minimal manual and it tells you where you can put your receiver. Ah, it's one of these here. So you can see there, that's where your receiver goes in. It's on a little four pin connector. So as I say, this is a plug and fly. So you have to provide your own receiver. It also doesn't have a LED board or buzzer. And I think for the price, I think they should have included that. I know a lot of people now are using D shot commands, but you know, for me, that should be just included, plus I like to fly line of sight, you know, so buzz is good for me when the voltage is getting low. But yeah, you don't get that with this. So this is the copter itself, and I'm looking at this and thinking, why is it so much more expensive than the XJB145? And probably because of the branded camera, so it's a Foxier camera. The motors are also bigger as well, so they are a 1506 motor and they are 4100 kV. They seem to be the same brand as the one on the Fury B Genie user, or Genius, I can't remember what it was called, but they are a higher kV. So 4100 kV and as they're the same motors, there's a lot of resistance there, very strong magnets. So we're going to have to up the digital idle speed to stop the motors from stopping under heavy maneuvers such as roll and pitch, etc. But I actually liked these motors. You've got directional locking nuts here and these take quite a bit of force to get through so I'm going to be using a socket set and just something to grip there and yeah it's a true X this one and it's a really nice frame actually it's got chamfered edges it seems really nice quality we have got a silicon battery mat already installed on there. It doesn't feel too sticky, but I'm sure it will do the job. We've got some heat shrink around the motor wires as well, so it seems like really nice quality. However, there are some things about this that I was surprised about. Now, usually when I get a copter, I put my receiver in, I put the props on so that I can weigh it and things, but I wanted to show you this because look at this. This is the VTX that it has come with, which is a pretty decent VTX. It's 48 channel. It switches from 25 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt to 200 milliwatt, I believe. And it's just loose. Look at this, just loose in here. They could have at least tied it down and had the antenna coming out the top. So that's what I'm going to be doing there. What I do like about the VTX though is it has a little indicator on there. So it tells you the channel and also the band and the power through there as well but the button is there so if you did sort of 
hold it down in place and also the antenna is off to one side so it's going to be sticking out slightly yeah it's going to be difficult to get hold of that button but I don't change my channels that much so not a problem for me but they could have at least held it down I think anyways on to the ESC board so it's a 4 and one and they say it's BL Halley S so I think it's flash with 16.6 .6, so you're going to want to upgrade it to 16.7 or the latest version to get D-Shock commands, which I'm going to do because we don't have a lost model alarm otherwise. I mean, you, like I say, you can add a buzzer, but you'd have to mess around then. Source your own buzzer. So, yeah, it's actually set up with one shot 42. So, again, I'm going to have to get everything together and see if it does support D-Shot. I mean, you'd think it would, but not all BL Halley S ESCs actually do so I'm gonna need to check that out then above there we've got a omnibus f3 flight controller so not f4 so again for the prize you gotta think you know they could have put a more modern flight controller in there however I prefer the f3s a lot of the times because f4s they can be susceptible to noise yeah you can't do common filters but that's really in the beta stages anyway so i'm not too fussed about that but yeah it has beta flight on screen display it's come flash with version 3.17 so i would probably update that to version 3.25 i think we're on now and it wasn't really set up whatsoever it's got the correct port selected for the receiver which is UART3 it's got its own PIDs in there which just don't look correct whatsoever and it also just has one thing on the on-screen display which is the voltage so I'm gonna have to change all of that around it's just got stock rates in there and on the modes it has got arming and angle mode on an AUX 1 and 2 but they're in a really weird position so for my X10S transmitter that I'm going to be using and the free sky receiver I'm going to have to play around with that and seeing as it doesn't really have any setup whatsoever in here not so great for a beginner so yeah a bit of a shame about that but yeah we have got a Foxier micro camera which I really like so you know that's a plus point and it's a premium camera it's got the little attachment coming off for the on-screen display there which you are given so you're given a little controller board and we've got a load of cables as well so let's take a look at those while we are here so we have got these look like four pin one millimeter pitch JST so that's probably going to be for your LED and buzzer if you want to upgrade it. And then we have got one here for the receiver as well. Lots of different cables in there though. So we're only going to need to use three. So I'm going to have to refer back to the diagram and take some of these pins out if I want to use this with my receiver or just source my own pins. I might do that. And then we just have the props left, and they are a Dell prop, quite an old prop, 3032, so fairly low pitch, and they are quite a weak prop as well, so not really taking huge advantage of those motors, but I will fly it with these propellers, but it's probably best to switch out to the gem fan propellers you know they are much more modern and they have more pitch on them it's like we've also got a battery strap as well on here but i'm gonna have to install that it does look like there's plenty of space underneath though for that so that is pretty cool so we also have a xt30 connector at the back which should be the standard these days so i'm glad about that of course it doesn't come with a battery so i'm going to be using these tattoo 850 milliamp batteries one thing i do like about this is that we've got this top here which is in line with the camera so you could stick a mobius mini on the top there no problems you just have to make sure that you root your antennas in a way that it doesn't get in the way of that top there and of course we can change the camera angle quite easily we've got some hex screws on the side there as well okay let's go for the line of sight 
with this one. Just starting off in angle mode here. It's not ideal conditions. It has been snowing. Okay, let's go for a punch. Oh my goodness. Well, I think it's safe to say that so far out of all the three inch models I've flown, that's definitely got the most bite. Blimey. That really has got a crazy punch. And that's on some low pitch propellers as well. I literally cannot take my eyes off it because it's moving that fast. So let's try Acro. And one thing I noticed, this battery strap that they have given, it's not really big enough for this 850 milliamp battery. That is absolutely bonkers. I've never had a reaction to a copter that has this much power before. So maybe that's where it's worth it for the money because that is absolutely nuts. <laughs> so I've just stuck my own tune on here and I'm not hearing too many determ oscillations. I can hear it a little bit. The D is very low. To see what it's like for FPV. <laughs> it's a noisy thing. It's angry. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be issues with power with this one. Seems all right. It's funny because when doing FPV with these models, it's difficult to tell the power difference, but line of sight, I can really tell with this one. It's bonkers. <laughs> Well, I was going to switch the props out, but I'm not sure there's any need to see if I'm getting any vibrations or anything FPV because they're quite a weak propeller. But so far, it seems to fly nice. Let's try flicking it back into angle and see if we've got any drift issues. Looks like that battery has moved back actually. Yeah. Might have to use a different strap, you know. Not a big deal, but a bit of a pain. Yeah, that's that's coming out that battery. So let's come in for a landing. And just while I'm here, just check out how warm the motors are. Nah, lukewarm. Not too bad at all. Shame about this battery strap though. So as the stock battery strap isn't big enough for this battery, I've gone ahead and used a run cam strap. And as this copter is just so powerful on this 4S battery, I've decided to fit a Mobius Mini and I've used the stock battery strap to fit around there. You just have to make sure that you route your antennas out the back. So I fitted a XM Plus and we've got the two antennas coming out the back there and I've also routed the VTX antenna through the little hole there and I strapped it all down using a cable tie. They should have just done that out of the box. 
So I mentioned earlier that it was set up for one shot 42. I have changed that to D shot 600 and it seems to work fine. So I've upgraded B Al Hali S to 16.7 and D-Shot commands is working as well so that's good news for when I lose it in the grass I can flick a switch and the motors will twitch and it will make a noise and let me give you some statistics while I'm here as well so the copter weighs 137 grams without a battery then add in the 850 milliamp 4S battery it comes in at 240 grams so it's still under that magic 250 gram figure and then when you add the Mobius Mini it comes in at 267 grams so still quite respectable I think so let's get and take it for a fly and see how it performs so I thought I was going to dislike this copter because I think the price is a little bit too high and you don't even get a receiver for that and the VTX was loose and it doesn't have a buzzer or an LED board but you know what, this is one of the best performing copters I've ever flown especially in the 3 inch class, the performance is just phenomenal the amount of punch that is there is just crazy and you can stick a Mobius Mini on there and not even notice the difference and yeah it shows me where my loyalties lie really because at the end of the day if the copter performs well I can forgive it for the little niggles that it's got and I actually do think that it's worth the money when I've seen how it performs and if you take a look at the DVR footage as well the video feed is crystal clear which you'll know I'm always a big fan of and the reception's really good as well with it only being 25 milliwatt and it carries a Mobius Mini so yeah I can't hate on it in fact this is going to be at one of the highest spots on my favorite 3 inch models because of how it performs that punch is just ridiculous I can throw any maneuver at it such as those inverted jaw spins and I've just got so much time to get the maneuver done just look at that because it just gains so much height quickly so as for the tune the tune out of the box was no good the D was too high and you need to reduce the P's as well it still needs some work on the tune I should say especially after putting this Mobius on there I think it could probably do with a little bit more D now but you're gonna need to reduce the D quite a lot look at that nice inverted jaw spin like I said I've got loads of time to just do the maneuvers absolutely fantastic but yeah it does have some shortcomings like I say so you've got to bear that in mind when getting this copter but I do think if you work at it you will not be disappointed in it you just have to get a nice tune on there and just put the latest version of beta flight on there because the version that it came with was old and it wasn't set up anyways pretty much in a usable state so you're gonna have to do a full setup on that and I know people don't like doing that and I always say get the Baby Hawk R if you don't like messing around with the setup because that one's set up pretty nice but I think if you are serious about this hobby then you're gonna want to learn Beta Flight how it works to set it up how you like anyways and yeah I was impressed with this copter it is a little bit pricey but I think it is worth buying into because it just has so much punch not bad on the amps either I was getting a four minute flight time in some cases but if I abused it three and a half minutes something like that but anyway I'm gonna come in for a landing you can see I've got some juice in reserve I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers